and we are rolling on this fifth day of November at UCLA in Los Angeles where it's a beautiful day the sunshine is shining and we're about to debate the question this house would recognize Palestine in the United Nations for the affirmative Austin on the opposition Shira Go back a little bit. Yeah. So you stay in this green um, area. Okay, I will call this house to order and I will recognize the leader of the government for a speech not to exceed seven minutes in length. You can knock on the table. Hang on just a second. I need my You stand that way a little bit, please. Yeah. Good. And we are rolling. The United Nations National Charter, Chapter 2, Article 4, lays out only one quality that makes a country eligible to be a state member in the United Nations. And that is that the United Nations is open to all other peace-loving states which accept the obligation contained in the present charter. It's open to all countries to maintain the, uh, the idolization of speech over war, who idolize the ability to communicate diplomatically rather than attack. Now at the same time where we have denied Palestine the right to be a, member of, a state member of the United Nations, we have allowed in countries that have committed uh, countless human rights violations. These include Russia, Iraq, Egypt, not to mention Israel themselves. We feel that we strongly affirm that this house would recognize Palestine in the United Nations. Before we move on, we must first go on to some definitions. First of all, what is Palestine? That sometimes becomes a big question. What we are going to define Palestine as is the basically state of Palestine that's led by the Palestinian Liberation Organization, to the most part, which includes the area of Gaza and the West Bank. We also must recognize, uh, we must, sorry, uh, define what it means to recognize them in the United Nations. Now, what we are going to say recognize would be is to give a position as a member state in the United Nations. Member states have the right to attend General Assembly, to participate, to speak, and more importantly, to vote on all issues of the United Nations. This is something that all countries that are, uh, deserve, at least all that are, that are attempting to instill peace, and that is why we believe that it, uh, Palestine deserves a spot. Now, we need to see why is this an issue. And we see that since the partitioning of Palestine in 1947, there has been constant uh, conflict in that region. It has never stopped. And, um, and it, actually, what initially happened was when Palestine was split up, it was split up uh, through a UN vote, and it was passed with 33 votes for, 13 votes against, and 10 abstentions. Now, the interesting thing is that not one country in the Middle East actually voted for this resolution. No one voted to split up Palestine because this was simply done by Western, uh, by Western countries. And what they've shown is this is why this has caused continuous conflict. Because the area that was split up was not done for the people that are in the region. It was split up for the Western powers regions. And now this has led to countless problems in 60 years of violence in the region. Now you may ask, how big is this problem really? And we're here to tell you that it is a very big problem. 
since its founding, Israel has been involved in 12 wars or conflict, actually more than 12 wars, 12 large ones, and those include the Israeli War of Independence, right after they were given area in Palestine, the reprisal operations, the Six-Day War, the War of Attrition, Yom Kippur War, the 1982 Lebanon War, the First Intifatada, the Second Intifatada, the 2006 Lebanon War, the Gaza War of 2008, Operation Pillar of Defense, and Operation Protective Edge in 2014. What we see is there has been consistent violence from 1947 through now. And this has resulted in countless deaths. For example, the Operation Protective Edge, which is what occurred in 2014 alone, it was a one-month operation. And in that, only 71 Israelis were killed. And you might think this is good. Fairly, it was for their defense, not many people died. But at the same time where 71 Israelis were killed, 1,938 Palestinians were killed in September alone, and that was set from September 2014 Palestinian Center for Human Rights. Additionally, 9,567 uh, were injured, according to the 2014 Ministry of Health in Gaza, and additionally, 485,000 Palestinians were displaced due to fightings or lost homes, which was stated by the 2014 UN report on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Now what we see is that this is a big issue. But why is it such an issue? Why is there still fighting? And what this side will tell you today is that the problem exists because Israeli has continued aggression without pushback from any Western nations. That is why we must recognize Palestine and the UN because it is the only solution. Now before we do this, we must first prove to you that Israel is uh, aggressive and that we are support and that we are not pushing back against them. And the way we're going to uh, support, support the fact that they're aggressive is that out of the 12 conflicts I mentioned, Seven of them were started by Israel. Out of the last four, which occurred in the last two decades, three of them have been started by Israel. Israel has been a consistent aggressor in many actions. And now, although one would normally suspect nations, especially those like the United States, to have pushback against them, we've seen nothing. In fact, Israel is still the largest supporter of U.S. aid, where one-third of the American foreign aid budget goes to Israel. That's $2 billion, even though Israel's population is only 0.001% of the world's population. And additionally, their GNP is higher than the combined GNP of Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Gaza, Jordan, and the West Bank. Yet they still get a third of our aid. We believe that there has not been enough international pushback, and that is why we have not seen uh, progress. Additionally, Bibi Netanyahu said after the new president was elected in, uh, in Palestine that there would no longer be any, uh, any negotiations with Palestine. This refusal to negotiate, this refusal to have American pushback, and the complete uh, aggression that has been consistently showed, so that there is a significant issue that we must deal with. Now we have to see what is the solution going to be. And what we believe the solution is, is to give Palestine a spot in the United Nations. Now why? We believe that for two reasons. One, it's going to deter future conflict, and two, it's going to encourage diplomacy. You know, that's the most important thing. Now, we have to see why it deters conflict. And now, this is a twofold plan. So, under the first contention, which is deter, uh, deterring conflict, the first part is that we see it's going to give negative reinforcement to Israel. Because now, when Israel goes, because uh, now we're first of all saying, hey, Israel, you can't just do what you want. You can't just start these attacks. Because now we're giving support, we're giving recognition to Palestine. Second of all, now these little conflicts that Israel has is no longer them invading a non recognized nation. But now these are international wars. These are two United Nations countries going against each other, and that gives significant, act, uh, significant leeway for the United Nations to take action and for complete international pu pushback as a whole. Now the second contention, which is going to be the most important, is we encourage diplomacy. Whereas despite whatever Bibi Netanyahu said about refusing to uh, have diplomacy, when we get the Israeli and the Palestinian diplomat in the same room for the General Assembly, what we do is we bring them together and we allow diplomacy to occur. Additionally, we're giving Palestine the right, we are showing them that we are trying to support them, and that builds trust. By doing this, what we see is we're going to push, we're going to finally give Israel some negative reinforcement, we gain the trust of Palestine, and we bring the groups together. What this means is this is how we can make a valuable diplomatic solution. We can stop the violence by bringing people to the table, people who actually want to have a change. That is how we're going to save lives, and that is why we strongly urge a government ballot. Thank you. I now stand... I now stand open for cross-examination. Thank you so much. Stand closer together. The chair now will recognize the leader of the opposition for a cross-examination, not to exceed three minutes in length. 
So um, you discussed Operation Protective Edge and that there were more Palestinians who were had fatal attacks during that time than the Israelis. Right. And so I do want to know if you knew, according to a 2015 Washington Post article by Terrence McCoy, um, Hamas actually has been condemned for using their own civilians, Palestinians, as human shields, ignoring Israeli leaflets that are telling them bombs are coming, and more so, they've been accused of hiding bombs inside schools that were given to them by the UN. So my question is, you say that we should let them know that we trust them and that we're there for them, but if they go against the values that the U.S. has of freedom, democracy, Stand the power stance, by the way. And even more so, they laugh in the face of the UN by placing bombs in the schools that were made for the children. How do you think recognizing them is going to help this, and why do they need our trust? Well, first of all, if we were to give any adherence to the conjecture given by the Washington Post, let's say that they're using their people as human shields. Now, I want to ask you, if there was no conflict from an aggressive Israel taking sand into Gaza, what would they need the shields from? This, all this civilian death can be completely avoided if we have a diplomatic solution. And the only way to have that is through, uh, is through this. Additionally, what you see is that this Operation Projective Edge, which you are somehow defending, 18 months prior to this, there were zero deaths from, from, uh, from Palestinian bombings on Israel. It was completely unfounded. There was no reason to attack. There was no imminent threat to Israel. Yet they created their own yeah, um, interrupt you there. That, yes. that is actually a wrong accusation. I have almost 50% of my family living in Israel, and we get called to go into the bomb shelters whenever I visit in the summer, and I've been there five times. So to say that it's not a threat in Israel, they just know how to protect their people, and they do have those qualities. So my question is, if um, some of my sources have shown that, um, if you mentioned the Six-Day War and the Israeli War yes. of Independence, so if the UN is to recognize um, Palestine in their house, what is this going to do to change the situation other than upset Israel because they're not negotiating terms together? If um, they are to be recognized, the borders are going to be pressured to be changed prior to the Six-Day War, which is just going to cause another war. You can't eliminate Israel as Palestine would wish for you to do. It's not going to go anywhere. Well, so how no, is recognizing them going to do well, that? Is, that is a large leap. We are not going anywhere to, we didn't even say, getting back the borders from before the Six-Day War, need, nor are we going to get rid of Israel from the United Nations. All we are doing is accepting Palestine. Well, I'm sorry, from Israel. All we, what we do agree is that there will be pushback from Israel, and they will be angry. But we think that is exactly what we need because they have gone unchecked for far too long. And the only way we are going to get diplomacy is by knocking down Israel, Peg, by stepping up Palestine, giving them the support we need that shows, in the light of the international community, they are on equal playing field. That is how we have a diplomatic solution, not by one of a higher authority, or one of a lower, but by people of the equal field. The only way to do that is to bring down Israel, not and to bring. Palestine. The U.S. will never condemn terrorists, so thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. That was 256. Very nice. The chair will now recognize the leader of the opposition for her constructive speech, not to exceed seven minutes in length. Here, here. Give me a moment to adjust the camera since you're a different height. There you go. Okay. So as you all can see, this is an issue that really heats a lot of people up, for me especially since I have connections to the country of Israel. So today we're debating recognizing Palestine in the UN. And the proposition is to be presented as a policy case in the negative. That's what I'm defending. Palestine should not be recognized in the UN or by the UN. Therefore, I win this debate if and when I prove that it is not in the best interests of the UN or the rest of the world to recognize Palestine at this time in this format and that this idea should be dismissed and voted against for reasonable doubt. First off, let's talk about the UN. I have a similar quote to my opponent here um, from the UN website, which says, Recognition and membership in the UN is open to all peace-loving states which accept the obligations contained in the UN Charter. So I'm going to talk to you about why that one quality that a state must have to be recognized in the UN is not one that Palestine has, because they are not a state that is open to peace and love. Um, okay, so if um, in defining recognition in this case, recognition would give Palestine voting power in the United Nations, which is different from their current, ob current observer status. So let's define what Palestine is. Author Alan Dowdy of the informative text Israel Palestine states that Palestine has never been the name of a nation or a state. It is a geographical term, which is something that a lot of us are unaware of. Although in somewhat of a harsh manner, Dougherty's expertise has led him to comment that Palestine has never existed on its own, autonomous entity. There is no language and no distinct culture known as Palestinian, and there has never been a land known as Palestine governed by Palestinians. 
So what is the problem? So to understand the deep-rooted nature of this issue and how it's even a policy regarding the UN, it's important to understand that there's a long history between Palestine and Israel since the establishment of Israel in the Middle East. As explained by an Israel on Science Technology article from 2013, Palestine includes the territories of what is present-day Israel and Jordan, and Palestine resides in the West Bank and is located in Israel. Although the conflict is a huge contributing issue to the case, the question at hand is whether or not the United Nations should recognize Palestine. We can argue that both cases here want peace in the Middle East, and it's whether or not this is recognizing them in the UN will do so, and I'm here to tell you that it won't. Packing, passing this recognition would not change any ground action, and Israel would still control what they seem to, what some deem to be Palestine. And since World War II, that's how it's been. One of the major obstacles of achieving peace has been the unrealistic expectations on the Palestinian sides. Israelis are ready to give Palestine their own state, but the Palestinians are not yet ready to give Israel their own state. And this is from a John Quigley 2012 article. According to author Teresha Welsh of the U.S. News and World Report, voting to recognize Palestine in the United Nations will make Palestine expectations even higher, as I said before. United Nations action in this case, especially if, through it is, if it is through an abstentation rather than a positive vote, would rather indicate the American and international level patience is infinite. In our, so how big is the problem? An article in the Jerusalem Post this past January explains how full membership recognition by the United Nations requires the Security Council's approval, which alongside others, um, the United States has clearly said that they would veto, and I think that our values should mirror those of the United States. Alan Dershowitz writes in his 2012 Wall Street article regarding why it would be unethical to give um, the Palestinians the prerequisite of Security Council approval. In its efforts to gain Western support in terms of recognition, the Palestinian Authority has made claims that it will become another secular democratic state. However, the terrorist organization known as Hamas, the group which has won parliamentary election in the past and is in control of Palestinian territory, wants Palestine to be a Muslim state and is governed by Sharia law. They're portraying themselves as being oppressed, and that's just not how it is. The creation and recognition of a new Palestinian state will be a genuine apartheid state which practices religious and ethnic discrimination, which laws are based on the precepts of one religion. And this is according to Dershowitz, the same expert in one of his 2012 books. And this is not taking us one step closer to the goal that either side has of peace in the Middle East and peace between these two countries. Why the security, UN Security Council should be resistant to approve um, Palestine is because giving... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, why do we have the problem? People want to solve the problem between Israel and Palestine. That's apparent. But what would the borders of a Palestinian state look like if the Palestinians are able to get their way and gain recognition without negotiating with Israel? According to Teresha Wells of the U.S. News & World Report, the state of Palestine has unreasonable and unachievable demands and requests for peace. If these issues haven't been worked out with Israel in the past, they will not be solved via a vote of recognition. More so, it'll just disrupt any progress that has been made towards peace. The Palestinians don't want peace at this point or a two-state solution, which is what is usually backed up by the UN. There is not going to be one viable peace deal that will satisfy all parties, and this is backed up by authors Khan Sherbek and El Almi of The Palestinian-Israel Conflict, A Beginner's Guide, which was written in 2015. Israel has minimum demands for peace. They want to maintain some settlements, not allow an armed Palestinian state for their own safety, and Palestinians would not be allowed to settle on Israel property. But if UN recognition of Palestine is voted for, especially by an absent vote, these demands may change on Israel's half, and the process of peace will only be extended. Although it seems that the United Nations recognition of Palestine is a step forward for the Palestinians, and towards negotiating an agreement between Israel and Palestine, the truth of the matter is that at best, yes, it may marginally improve the Palestinians' negotiating position. On the other hand, it will most certainly increase their expectations and their demands, which are very dramatic, subsequently making it next to impossible for those in position of Palestinian leadership to be able to take advantages of any possible gains with Israel. What is the solution? The only way out of the crisis in the Middle East, specifically regarding Palestine, is through a negotiated settlement with Israel, not through UN recognition. If not negotiated through and by Israel, the issue will remain irrelevant. This is because if the vote was passed, yes, Palestine may initially rejoice. However, Israel will not be moving its borders or placement anytime soon with that. And with that, the status quo is reserved and the issue will still remain the same while upsetting Israel for um, the UN's actions. 
the UN promotes um, the two-state solution as well. Will this solution work? Yes. The, his, the, the question in the Middle East is always, will the solution work? However, at this time, recognizing Palestine and the UN will not bring peace to the Middle East. Thank you. 648. Thank you so much. I now stand. I now stand open for cross examination and points of clarification. I now stand open for cross examination and points of clarification. Let me readjust the camera for the tall man. Okay, and we are rolling on the cross examination. Yes. Now you ended your last uh, cross examination by saying that the U.S. and the U.N. will never condemn terrorists. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Now, I want to say then, how do you explain the actions done by the U.S. to, first of all, predict many terrorist uh, actions, especially the assassination of many uh, Central American leaders, additionally the creation of ISIS, the creation of the Taliban by the arming of Afghani rebels to try to stop the USSR expansion, and additionally Israeli's assassination of both Iraqi and Iranian scientists. Are these not terrorist actions? Yes, is that what your question is? Yes, I am. So then obviously we do see principle to defend terrorist actions. Now we move on to, you talk about how Israel is run, or Palestine, sorry, is run by a terrorist group, Hamas. Just to say your question talks about us condemning terrorist actions, I'm talking specifically about Hamas, which is the yes, government good. in Palestine and has one right And yes, as I said, that's, that's exactly as I said in my about. debate, quoting Wilner, Keenan, and Yona in a 2015 article, the United States has made it clear that they would veto this vote, choosing to prefer a return to negotiations between Israel and Palestine. So. Well, that's great. But um, now we want to go back to the issue of Hamas that you talked about, where you said that they are run by a terrorist state. Is that correct? You said that Hamas is a terrorist organization. Yes. Uh, are they a terrorist organization, or are they the government of Palestine? Well, after taking a class in terrorism, actually, last year at UCLA, you learned that it's very hard to define what a terrorist group is. For one group of people, are they freedom <laughs> fighters? For someone else, are they terrorists? But when you have someone building tunnels under borders to get into Israel and putting bombs in schools sponsored by the UN blocks away from hospitals and buildings by the UN that are there to protect Palestinian civilians, I think those are acts of terror. Okay, so we agree that the terrorist organization thing is just complete conjecture and whatever your opinion is. It's no, not I'm saying a fact that it's that a terrorist organization. No, I think as long as someone can define it as a terrorist organization and what they are doing more so, what you're talking about with protective... Well, then protective, I think that everyone in the Middle East could saying, say that the United States is a terrorist organization. Wouldn't you say the same thing? Um, no, because the Middle East, as Israel, is the only democratic free nation in the Middle East. Look at us, please. Someone who we should be defending. Persuade us. Oh, uh, well, okay, so you say we should be defending them, but for an organization that is absolutely refusing to go to a negotiating table, yet has conducted countless aggressive actions, why should we be defending them? Additionally, why should we be giving them any aid at all, let alone $2, $2 billion worth of aid, when, as we stated, the, actually, uh, Well, sorry. can I just answer your first yeah, question? Please, go for it. Um, in terms of talking about their lack of wanting to negotiate, Israel, as I stated, according to the El Alami and Cohn Sherbrooke 2015 article, they have minimum demands, which include maintaining some settlements, no armed Palestinian state, and no Palestinian settlement so in Israel property. There are which, compared to the demands of the Palestinians, is much uh, smaller. So you're saying the demands that they have is to make sure the country can never have an army, they cannot defend themselves, and they must stay in a small area. Now we go on, I want to bring up some statistics. Now Israel has, has 8.16 million people with a population density of 392 people per kilometer squared. Now Gaza has 1.76 million people, and their population density is 4,822. The GDP per person of Gaza is less than a hundred times that of Israel. Why should we be giving any aid to Israel at all? Just well, because they want... Okay, last question, answer of the question. I think um, that whole question was irrelevant and just a way for you to kind of throw in some facts because what we're debating here is whether <laughs> Palestine should be recognized in the UN. We're not talking about aid going to Israel. That's a whole separate debate. Thank you so much. Okay, it's now time for refutation. You go first. Yes, it's your turn to refute. We'll now have four steps of refutation, we hope, from the government represented by Austin. Yes, you have, am I giving you four or five minutes? Five minutes, I guess. You have five minutes. Let's see what's it? No, it's four. Okay, yeah, I got four. Yeah, I got four. Go. Now, to start off, we want to look at how they said that this is not an issue of whether or not we should be giving aid to Palestine, but we believe this is exactly the issue. Now, what we think is that the aid has been going to Palestine for way too long. Now, that's the issue. They've been unchecked throughout their aggressive actions. What we need to do on the international level 
is to take a stand against Israel, is to make a significant change, and to say that, you know what, you need to make valuable changes, you need to go to the negotiating table, no matter what you think of the other group, uh, no matter what you call them, even the terrorist organization or whatever. Now, we believe that because of that, it's essential to accept Palestine into the United Nations. Because that is the only way to take down this hegemonic idea, uh, this hegemonic idea that Israel has about themselves. Where, as you said, they're the only democratic place in the Middle East. They're the only place where freedom reigns. Now, that is going to stop peace. Because when a country comes from such a position of perceived superiority, there is no way they will ever negotiate with someone. Yes, they may say, we'll give you this settlement. We'll let you have the land you already have and give you no weapons and make sure you never attack us. But they're not actually going to make a change. We need to accept Israel to level them up. And that brings us to the next thing they said. Where they stated that by giving uh, Israel the recognition of the United States, we are going to increase their demand. But we directly disagree with this because it simply doesn't make sense. Now the logic is, right now Israel has, their, uh, Palestine, sorry, has very few allies, especially those in the West. Because as we have stated with the aid going to Israel, in the West, everyone gives all of their support to Israel. And therefore, Palestine needs to be alone. Palestine may have unrealistic expectations because they know that unless they have that, no one's going to take them seriously. By bringing them to the United Nations, what we are going to see is that we give them the respect they deserve. We show them that we're not just going for Israel. We're not just trying to undercut you guys. But we are trying to create peace. We are trying to create uh, an end to the conflict. Now, that's what we really have to see here in this debate is who is going to end conflict. And what we say is that by bringing these people to the United Nations, what we're going to do is show Palestine they have the support and show Israel that there is a limit to the actions they can take. At the same time, we bring people together into a room. And therefore, what we're going to do is to more, fee uh, more easily allow diplomacy. They said that diplomacy is the issue, and we agree with that statement. But we disagree with how they want to do it. We do not believe that diplomacy will be, uh, can be occurred, achieved just by letting it run out the clock. Because Israel even stated they are not going to have any diplomacy with the current government. And if that is the government that the people want in Palestine, then that's simply the government that's going to stay for the time being. What we think is we must use our powers of negotiation to end the conflict right now. The lives and the blood have been spilled for long enough. And the one way that we can actually make the end to this conflict is by bringing people together and by trying to have an actual decision, by bringing people onto an equal playing field so that, a, uh, so that a valuable decision can be made. Do not listen to them when they say that Palestine is simply a terrorist organization with unrealistic expectations, because this simply isn't false. Yes, their expectations may be too much, but we believe that that's what negotiation is for. Because without a negotiation, you, you always overbid when you start off. But through this negotiation, through a UN moderator, through the pressure from the international community, what we see is we end up at a decision that works for them. And we also show that despite what they may say, that Israel's demands are just as outrageous as Palestine's. They say to just, no, you guys just keep the land you have and can never be armed. But as I stated, the population density in Gaza is 4,822 people per kilometer squared. And in Israel, it's 392 people per, per kilometer squared. And that's from the CIA research on the uh, on the Israel conflict. Now what you see is that it's simply a discrepancy. Give, they need to take back something. They need to make some wins. And that is why we must help Palestine make some decisions. That is why we must instill peace in the Middle East by recognizing Palestine in the United Nations. Thank you. Chair now recognizes the leader of the opposition for her four steps of refutation rebuttal not to exceed four minutes in length. My opponent has tried to convince you that the United Nations should recognize Palestine, and I'm here once again to tell you not only that I disagree with my opponent's stance, but also that you should too for the mere fact that it only covers up a much larger issue that cannot be solved simply through recognition in the United Nations. Not only that, but as I have discussed, recognition hurts the situation more than it helps it showing how this issue is not as an efficient cost-benefit plan because recognizing Palestine alienates Israel, the one true democratic free country within the Middle East and our only beacon of hope. My opponent talked about how we have an obligation to help the Palestinian people. This isn't an issue of helping people, it's the United States. We as United States citizens, of course we want everyone to be help and be in peace, but Israel is our only beacon of hope in the Middle East. And if we don't side with them, Things won't be things won't be good. Oh my! 
By betraying ties with Israel, not allowing a negotiated settlement to take place, the forceful recognition will do nothing to change the issues plaguing the Palestine-Israel problems. The issue being debated here is not in regards to choosing a side, Palestine or Israel, or feeling that Palestine doesn't deserve a vote. It is being able to step back and analyze the situation from afar and see if the recognition by the United Nations is the best decision for all parties involved, which it is not. Therefore, I close my end of the debate by stating that the United Nations, with the interests of all involved parties in mind, should not recognize Palestine. The timing and other issues pre presented in my case demonstrate effectively why this is so. Thank you. That was one minute and 33 I know, I, seconds. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just like, this is too much. <laughs> okay. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Okay, if you could come close together so uh, we can see you as the decision is made. You come uh, across the house and shake hands. Sorry, I get really heated about this. <laughs> yeah, and what do you mean? Why are you sorry? You were beautiful. Uh, now, uh, it's your turn now to be the judge and to think about what you just heard and think about this little sheet I gave you because I'm going to ask you about your decision. And uh, we'll have a vote and then we'll have a discussion from you about this very controversial issue. When you've uh, reached a decision, if you could pass your ballot to me, I'd be most grateful. Make sure you've signed it, your side is complete, and you've put in a score.
go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm out of you, surf on the internet. Taking notes on this class, of course. Have you voted? Everyone's voted? Okay. As you would expect, this was not a lopsided decision, but a close decision. And the winner on a six to four decision was the government, Austin. Now, let's hear why. Stand up, say your name. And following the paradigm, tell us what model you use, how you voted, and why. Stand up for Jesus. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rosie. Hi, Rosie. I'm going to say that I voted for the affirmative government. But only by a few points. I gave them 52, and I gave the opposition 48. Um, I felt it was a very, very close um, argument, a uh, debate between the two. Um, I used the standards of good reasons and good story. I felt that the opposition had a good story. They had um, true support and, and were very strong. Uh, I'm pointing out that Palestine had no real territory and they were basically encroaching on everybody else's territory and asking for them to give them their land basically so I thought that she proved a really good point on that but Austin did uh, contradict her a couple times and so that was difficult to overlook so I had to give it to the uh, uh, affirmative on that. Um, he was also very very good on uh, cross-examination and the reputation so um, he made great points there. Uh, the refutation was very strong and um, it was a great closing, I felt. So that really convinced me at that point that um, it would level the, politically they would be in the same place if Palestine was, yeah. um, mm -hmm. was to give uh, recognized because then they would receive support and allies and maybe they would change their, their behaviors and take themselves serious and not be such rebels and maybe consider more uh, diplomatic approach. So you kind of can understand that. And Thank you so much, Rosie. We're here. Hi, Annette. Hi, Annette. Hi, so I gave it to the proposition because I well, I tried to go with logic and good reason, and Shira, I thought you gave a great argument, but um, I feel like it'd be better to 
choose to a debate that you're less emotionally attached yeah, to. Yeah, I couldn't even do the reputation. Yeah, because it, it comes out and I yeah. completely understand it. But then the logic sort of gets overshadowed by the emotional attachment. Um, I thought that Austin did, what did I like? Oh, I thought he was just, he really stuck to the argument and over the cross-examination he really um, was able to contradict some assurance points on Israel and show that they're not, you know, maybe as innocent as it seems. And I liked the argument that the point of allowing Palestine to be led would be to create a, a level playing, playing field. field. Okay. And right now we're showing Israel um, preference. preference so. yeah. Okay, thank you, Annette. We're here. Here, yeah, okay. here. Hello, I'm Dora. I Hi, Dora. I'm excited with um, the proposition as well. Um, I really appreciated Shira's passion and frustration with the topic. Um, but, yeah, but I wish you had more factual evidence that could make me share your passion for Israel. Um, so that's why I gave the vote to Austin because he was more neutral and he considered the international community rather than one country's perspective. Um, I also like that he acknowledged that each side definitely has a bias, but that his solution could help regardless. Thank you. Right now. Thank you, Dora. Yes, sir. That would be you. You're a sir. I'm Shevin. Uh, Hi, Shevin. I gave it to the opposition. Great. Right. It was, uh, I thought, oh, you did a very good job. It was so exciting. <laughs> I totally enjoyed the debate. Yeah, I think I'll start with uh, the proposition first. I thought you started wonderfully. So I thought it was a really strong start. You had a good story, good reason. And uh, I like you, I like the point of you bring up the, the value of rights, like the basic rights of Palestinians in, in the world uh, and their general rights. But um, the thing that I swim me over is that I felt there was this assumption that giving once you give Palestine a place in the world, right? There's this assumption that it will definitely ensure peace. So that was my part where I struggled to to understand and to give it to you. Um, but that was mainly that. But I thought you did a wonderful job in refutation and cross examination as well. Um, for opposition, Shira, uh, I actually like that you brought in personal values into the thing because you are still the one arguing for the point. So that's my, my take on it. The reputation was a bit, wasn't so strong, but I thought you brought in a very strong uh, cross-reference. And, um, and even, even though the rebuttals was a bit short, I think you tackled the main issue. And uh, in general, for your debate, I thought there were good reasons, um, and it was really good logic throughout. So, yeah. Thank you, Shevin. We're here. Kevin, can you uh, make like a tree and leave? Okay, banana and um, split. So I was actually extremely split on this. I thought mm. both sides did an incredible job. Um, I got really into it and I gave it to opposition um, for the fact because I also liked her personal uh, attachment to it because she talked about how her family members have been in Israel and they've had to go in bomb shelters and, mm -hmm. and that impacted me in a way that made me kind of side with that but at the same time Austin did an incredible job um, yeah. especially in his cross-examination again he was able to contradict some stuff that she was saying um, I like how he also said that they would be brought to a level playing field and um I, I, he provided really clear solutions um, that it'll deter future conflict and encourage diplomacy. Uh, but for Shira, I just the emotional impact and her use of authoritative uh, sources yeah. kind of had a little bit more of an impact on my decision because there was a lot more factual evidence. As yeah, opposed I, to where Austin had a really great story, which really drove um, his side. <coughs> Right. If if you were going uh, on just on which side had the more uh, more arguments from authority, you chose Shira's side. Yeah, fair. Thank you so much.
Uh, hi everyone, my name is Vartan. I also hi Vartan. Uh, opposition uh, in a harder decision than normal. And I'll just point out a few things that I liked about your speech and a few things I didn't. Um, for, I'll, with the bad news first, I, I, I think you contradict yourself a few times. Uh, mainly the uh, part where you said that um, Palestine is not a geograph geographical location, I think you said that. And then later on in your speech, you said that they uh, are located in the West Bank. And, um, where the Palestinians else. are located. Oh, yeah, the Palestinians, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the Palestinians. And I thought that was a little contradictory and had me lost. Um, I think you had good subclaims, and I like the passionate aspect of your um, debate, and which won more points um, in that way. And I think you were stronger at cross examination, which also won me over. Um, for Austin, I think he um, had a great debate as well. Um, I saw the main points, I um, followed his structure, I just had a problem with the illumination of um, the points. I think he could have done a better job illuminating the main points of um, the debate because I, I feel like your voice was passionate, it was strong, it was um, hearable, just that it was all throughout your debate, but it was a little more like louder or more passionate. Or vocal variety maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, besides that, I think you had a persuasive voice and um, a lot of good points. Thank you, Barton. We're here. Hi, Justin. Hi, Justin. Um, I voted in favor of the opposition, and I thought this was a pretty close debate as well. So um, I'll start with Austin. I thought you had great emphasis, and you balanced stats and reasoning pretty well. Like, there wasn't really any um, disconnect between that. And I also think that you did a better job of telling the story of like, the history of it, um, but that did detract a little bit from when you get to um, actually supporting your proposition, but you made uh, some solid points. Um, I thought that during the cross-examination phase, um, you led your questions a little too much, like you you built up a story and then you threw in a question and it made it difficult to see like exactly what you were trying to ask, but other than that, I thought you did a pretty good job. Um, and for Shira, um, I really like that you seem extremely credible from all the sources you cited and also saying that you take the terrorism class. And I think you did a good job of sticking to the resolution. Um, you made it not a debate between Israel or Palestine, but whether or not Palestine should be accepted in the UN. I think saying that it wouldn't really change anything was pretty good. Um, but I think that you didn't have a proposed resolution for what should be done, but you did concede to that, so that kind of uh, is that issue. And um, I think emotion was good for the speech part, but I think in the cross-examination it took a little bit away from the flow of it. But it's done that, good job. Okay. Thank you. You're up. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. of becoming a UN state, and I think Austin um, won that argument by giving examples of Russia and Egypt and Israel on how they're part of the UN, but um, they're obviously not peace-loving, and um, Shira's argument that um, Palestine isn't peace-loving either kind of got like nullified by that, because like obviously they're non-peace-loving states in the UN as well, and then also I feel like the point that um, Palestine has unreasonable demands was like pretty prevalent in the debate, and I think Austin did a good job in um, stating the unreasonable demands of Israel as well, and um, I feel like that kind of um, leveled that argument out, and um, I also think that Austin had um, better reasoning for Palestine joining the UN than Shira gave for the negative consequences of mm -hmm. what would happen if Palestine did join because there is already um, like violence and peace is like not in the area already so mm -hmm. um, if Palestine did join the UN um, it wouldn't be necessarily like a negative consequence I feel like and Austin did give a good point that it would establish um, like formal diplomatic channels that might 
offer opportunities for future um, collaborations between the students, and that's why I chose us. What standard did you feel you used for appraising the argumentation? Would you what would you characterize yourself most as? I think good reasoning. Good reasoning. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Dora, can you move a little bit to the side and move your water bottle? Thank you. It moved itself. Good job, water bottle. Yeah. Thank you, Dora. Tam. Uh, Hi, Tam. I think I try to use. Logic. Tell us how you voted first. Oh yeah. <laughs> I voted for the affirmative, mm -hmm. um, and I think I try to use logic and good reasons. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I agree. It was like a really close debate. Uh, I, I was like, I like changed it at the last second. Um, and I think um, I really like Austin's point about like the other countries that weren't peace loving that were in the UN, uh, and I think mm -hmm. he stuck to the resolution. Um, but yeah, I think Shira had really good points and. I think what I was like constantly fighting over was the emotional part because it was really compelling to me, um, but I wanted to be like an obje objective judge. Um, so I think ultimately in the end, that's why I voted for Austin. Uh, okay, by the way, you know, you know, Aristotle talked about the use of proofs of ethos, pathos, and logos, right? And uh, this use of pathos of emotional appeals can be very powerful, but communication scientists have found that the higher the education of the individuals, the less likely it is to be successful. And it, very sophisticated people often resist highly emotional appeals. They think, I really don't want to be swayed by these emotions so much. And I think that's kind of what you were wrestling with a little, Pam. So I appreciate you articulating that. Yes, please. Pam, can you move to the way to the right? Hi, yes. I'm Jing. And Hi, I'm Jing. Hi, I decide on um, the standard of logic and good reasons and a good story. Okay, um, all three, great. Yeah. And how'd you vote, Jing? Yeah, I voted for the affirmative, although it's very difficult for me to decide. Yeah. And I think Austin is, uh, he follows a very good logical flow. Right. And Okay, thank you, Jing. Let me make a couple of comments that will be helpful for people's future debates and then we'll break. Um, I uh, thought the first case that Austin presented was quite logical, but evidence light. And uh, there's no question, folks, that uh, Shira had superior and more recent evidence for, to back up her claims. And if you if you watch rewatch the debate tonight, you will see this is so. She documented every one of her claims. Now, Austin got away with being very logical and very smooth, but uh, he didn't have a, hardly a stitch of evidence. But he relied on your own knowledge uh, to fill in the enthymemes and to be persuasive. The second thing that I think I want to point out to all of you is do prepare your cross-examination questions and write them out and don't don't uh, how do I say load up so heavily with these my evidence a one minute preface before you get to the question you know uh, a short thing of you know my evidence in 79 said this you didn't deny that right right it is a better short-ended, close-ended question. And both times, both sides let the other side go on too much. Finally, Shira, I think uh, your credibility was really hurt by a one-minute and 30-second rebuttal. I know, I had so many notes. And I, don't, and I just don't understand because there was so much to refute and there was so much you could have said. Okay, and folks, don't make the mistake that Shira made. For example... If nothing else, Shira could have repeated her case. 
that she had an excellent case that was well documented. She quoted Dershowitz. All of her evidence was from 15. You could have gone back know, through your case and just wrong. repeated it and pointed out that Austin didn't refute a stitch of it. I know. Didn't even breathe on it. I know. And just say, look, it's all undenied in this debate. Austin didn't even talk about it. He chose to talk about Israel and how ugly and bad it is, but that's not the resolution. And you pointed that out in cross accent a few I, times. I had my notes, I got nervous. But I you were, your credibility was deeply hurt by one minute, 30 second rebuttal. Don't let that happen. Fill it in with your uh, case if you have to. But use all your time because it hurts your credibility. Okay, any questions? Our work is done. Return with honor. <laughs> Thank you for uh, filling in. Yeah. I, was like, this is, I think this is like my actual date. What? I think this was my actual one anyway. Yeah, I know, but you've been doing other things. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd like to watch this with you and talk about it more. Yeah. Hi. So I did know you about the extra credit. Yes. So and did you sign up on the list? I Where's my list? Oh wait, I didn't get to do it ten minutes. There. Where's my list? Where's the list for the uh, sign up? For the roll, the roll sheet. No, the yeah, sign the up credit. for the extra credit. Oh. Uh, oh great, it's gone. Can I borrow your pen? I'll return it right away. Yeah, sure, okay. go ahead. Yes, and so your question is? So on the 21st, there is no issue, but on the 22nd, I need like an hour in the morning, sometime between nine and one. Am yeah. I allowed to like? Yeah, I just tell the uh, director of judges that you know one round you'll not be there. Oh, okay, thank you. And this is at UCLA, right? Yeah, it's in uh, public policy building. Public policy. Does someone have the, the sign-up list for the extra credit? Someone have the roll sheet? Roll sheet here. <laughs> I love it. All that trouble, and I've lost that sheet. Okay, great. I'm this gonna run. You think it's around Do you get here? Graded on base who wins? Just one. No. Okay. <laughs> effort. A for effort. Can I just put my oh, okay, phone number and email here then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which one? Um, the show armor one. Oh, okay. Professor, I'm going to talk to you about uh, no, my no, public, no, public no, policy no, brief no, okay. for you to put okay. my topic. So okay, good. Can I walk you through your stuck, Yeah, sure. we got to get out of here fast, so if you can help me pack up. Yeah, um, sure. Can I give you What is it? My Your midterm? Yeah. Yeah, great. Can you look through there and see if the, um, uh, the extra credit yeah. is in there? Um, I think that the girl that I signed up to do my my debate with dropped What's her name? I don't know. I just remember kind of how she looked, and I don't see her anymore. What's her name? I don't know. Well, what debate is it? It's the abortion one. Yeah, you're you're debating Austin. Oh, I'm debating Austin. Yeah, that's next week, right? Is it? Is it? The, it's the twelfth. You yeah. prepare like the day before or something? Like, <laughs> like 30 minutes ago, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I need Wait, uh, it's the shop for the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They were like about uh, five well, minutes. Well, that's the day I signed up. I know. Yeah, I only remember two of these. Yeah, next day. Okay. Okay, cool. Yes, oh, do you. Do we need, yeah, do you have my email? Uh, um, am I supposed to say. I'm just going to go there. 24 hours. Do you, do you share cross up questions? I don't know if I didn't run my process system. I guess I was supposed to know that. But if it is advisory, I think it's supposed to be. I think it's like the. So I was talking about the 30 cents you did. You exchange cost second questions? Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just tell me the number and I'll take the number. 
This goes in the Palestinian debate folder. That's next week, and I uh, hate to come to the week after. Saya. Saya. How do you pronounce your name? Saya. Saya? Okay, I just came Sounds good. Okay. Okay, cool. Bye. So are you Palestinian? No, I'm, I'm Iranian. Oh, really? I couldn't tell. Yeah, I look super white. Yeah. Why? No, we thought you were in the anime. <laughs> Israel. Yeah, yeah.